first, I want to talk about the the team. You mentioned a couple of them earlier, uh, but this this community really brought together uh, the the team that brought this deal down. You guys can all see the screen, right? Everybody, yes, we got it. Yes. Perfect, excellent. So, uh, a couple of these people I knew before I joined Jake and Gino. So, Chris Carney and I, we've been friends uh, for several years and partners on uh, some single family deals and things before this. Uh, but Debbie and Keone Wilcox actually met uh, in the group, and they are absolutely instrumental in this uh, property uh, being taken down. And uh, the Cohen brothers, as you mentioned, uh, you know, it's fun, funny story about them. Everybody calls them the Cohen brothers, but if you want to know a little secret about them, they're not really all brothers, right? <laughs> Two of the yeah. three, uh, funny story. They all look like it, it though. <laughs> they do. They do. Yeah. And it's a fun story. You ask them about it. They, they definitely t- tell you all about it. But the cool part is these guys are actually the reason I'm a member of Jake and Gino, right? If it wasn't for them, I would have not uh, discovered it. They, they referred me to the program. And I'm sure you guys are going to talk about that at some point about this awesome referral program that you have. But they they told they told me about the program, and I looked and I had a couple of phone calls through the process, and I never looked back because there is so many advantages to being a part of a community. This deal specifically never would have happened uh, if it wasn't for this community and several others. Right, uh, your next presenter Ryan and I and Tony actually you spoke about earlier. I've done a deal together that we wouldn't have ever connected if it wasn't for this community. And so uh, the community is the one of the biggest parts. Senator, before you go to your next slide, let me ask you, what was your biggest challenge or stuck point before joining Jake and Gino? I mean, I can I have a general idea because I've spoken to you so many times. And I know I know it was like that single family, maybe not knowing you could even get into multifamily. But from your perspective, what was your biggest hurdle, your biggest limiting belief before joining? Yeah, it just, I I would say it is a limiting belief. That's really what it boils down to. But if you want to get very specific, it was confidence that I could do it. I, there's a story that I've told a few times about uh, how there's a specific building in my town. And I said, 15 years ago, someday I'm going to own that building. And, you know, it'd be great if I could tell you it was one of the deals I've purchased, but it isn't. But my point is it was always someday. Someday I'd be able to buy that building. Eventually, I'm going to be big enough to buy that building. Well, I've now bought buildings significantly bigger than that and with significantly more value than that. Mm -hmm. It was that confidence and belief that I could go out and do it. That's awesome. Thank you. Yeah, of course. So let's dive in and talk a little bit about this specific deal. Um, Oh, why Jake and Gino? I guess I missed a slide. Thanks for that, Gino. Like that, this is exactly what I want to talk about. So Jake and Gino provided me with the the confidence as well as the connections to be able to do what I needed to do. So I knew I knew that if I failed, I had a safety net, right? I could call uh, Jake if I have a question about operations. I could call Gino if I have uh, questions about how how to buy a property. If I need a Rolodex, Scott's the man. I cannot tell you how many times. I've called Scott and said, I need to know this vendor in this area. And he's never let me down. Not once. Uh, One time, I think it was, I need to go do some research and I'll get right back to you. And I had an answer within, I don't know, two hours or something like that. Uh, He's never, ever let me down with resources. And I really think that that is how I got over that confidence is because I knew that if I needed anything at all, I'd have those resources right there in my back pocket. And it's a two-way street right before you go to the next slide. you, Everyone out there, you know, he fits one of those three buckets. He's residential, looking to get into multifamily. He understands the vehicle. He He's done it at a smaller level with the single families, but he's also a hard worker. Like I said, flying to Idaho to get to Knoxville is not the easiest thing in the world. I mean, sometimes it's brain damage trying to get connecting flights and all, but he shows up at all the events. He comes to the events. He, he goes out and he shares his knowledge and now, you know, coaching students and giving back. That's a big component to being successful and having that confidence is getting the reps in and doing the work. So, I mean, it does work both ways. The community is great, but you've also put a ton of effort and a ton of work as Ryan has done too. And we're going to highlight him as well. So big shout out to you as well all right so i want to tell you the story about this this deal uh and there's a there's a giant lesson i want to talk about here in the very beginning so uh we found this deal 
uh, through through a residential broker, you know, believe it or not, that was advertising advertising the deal for sale in his own buyer's list. So the the seller was a residential broker that had the deal for sale. And he had he has this list. He still publishes this list of all the properties he owns. Most of them are all single family. Mm-hmm. Right? So this guy didn't know what an apartment complex really was and what what kind of value he had. But I stumbled on this property on this list, and sure enough, there it is, right? And so uh, that's how we found it. And we walked the property. I took Chris. I took uh, can't remember which all the Coens went the first time, but Tom Lane and Daryl were. They're all all during the process. And uh, we negotiated a price. We had it under contract. And uh, because the guy was a single family broker, he required us to use the single family contract. We couldn't use an LOI. We couldn't use a PSA. So it was totally abnormal from a uh, normal multifamily purchase. But he required us to use that one contract. <clears throat> and he called me on the phone as we we're driving back. And he said, okay, we have a deal. Great. I'm excited. I'll sign the contract as soon as I get home. That's what I said to him. Mm-hmm. And by the time I got home, I had an email in my inbox that says, sorry, I got a better offer. Oh, crushing. He gave you a little leg and took it right back, right? Showed you a little <laughs> bit and took it right back. Yeah. Yeah. So of course, you know, depression sits in and you're upset and okay, well, we're going to move on. That is hard knocks, right? So you got you to learn your lesson and, and move on to the next thing. Well, I'm not sure exactly the timeline. Seven or eight weeks later, uh, I get a call and it says, hey, you remember that buyer? They couldn't perform. Mm-hmm. It fell out of contract. You can have it, but you have to go back at their price that they offered at it. So we negotiated a $3.1 million purchase originally. The new price was 3.3. So here's the first lesson. You have a contract in your inbox, pull over. And sign. <laughs> <laughs> read it first, right? Come on. <laughs> well, yeah, you should probably read it. If I'd it's a residential one, what is it? Two pages? You can get through that like on your iPhone, right? Exactly. They, exactly. Maybe have your attorney glance at it. Like, I think we should be, you know, a little bit uh, safer than that, but fair enough. Good. Good point. Yeah, Jeff, yeah, you're absolutely right. Make sure make sure you've got all your eyes and cross your T's, but don't wait, right? Yeah. Send it to your if it's if it's a PSA and it has to be reviewed by your attorney, send it in to your attorney, right? Yeah. If you've already reviewed it and you're just countersigning, sign it as soon as you possibly countersigning can. is a different story. Yes. Right. Exactly. I'm not talking about anybody being reckless, but that mistake, that waiting not even two hours, cost me and all of our partners two hundred thousand mm. dollars. It's tough. But I knew because I'd underwritten it before that it was still a good deal at 3.3. In fact, I would have even probably paid 3.5 uh, because it was it was the rents were significantly under market. It just needed a little bit of lipstick polish on the outside. No major problems. We were buying this property now at one hundred and ten thousand a unit. And there's stuff right around the area at one hundred and fifty thousand a unit. Mm-hmm. So I said immediately, we'll take it right? Send me the contract. Let's get it done. <clears throat> so when we bought this property, the average rent was right around $700 per unit. And the market rent was 900000 or I'm sorry, $900 per unit, $700 mm-hmm. a unit to $900 a unit per mm-hmm. month, right? Mm-hmm. That was the market rent of what we were targeting. Uh, and um, we negotiated a, a great fixed rate loan, right? No bridge debt. Uh, we used a local credit union that uh, gave us a uh, 10-year loan with a five-year fixed term and 12 months of interest only. I love credit unions, hands down. They're absolutely amazing. What was the rate on that? Uh, five, uh, 5.1, 5.15, somewhere around there. The, the, the 30-year amortization? No, unfortunately, it is 25. 25. Yeah. So I know some of the credit unions will go out to 30, which is cool. So. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. And I think we we probably could have negotiated for that, you know, if we would have given up a little bit of other things, but their offer was 25 and I was happy with that with the IO and everything of that nature. So And and we talk about having, you know, long-term fixed rate financing in this in this kind of climate because you don't know what's going to happen. You've got at least 5 years locked. 
uh, what I like about it, you can refi this thing after three years. Hopefully, rates will be down. So, you know, you're, you're, one of your exit strategies is, and I'm probably stealing your thunder, but I'm thinking ahead of that finance right. You know, we've already talked about the buy right. You've looked at comps. You like the vintage. You like the area. You like the location. You like the price per door. Now, the exit strategy is, oh, wow, I've got great financing. So, I've got the buy right done. The financing right is coming on right now. I got that five years and credit unions out there is recourse. It's recourse dead. It's not non-recourse, but that's okay. You go, you can go from recourse and then let's say in two years you stabilize, you can take it to non-recourse or maybe go to community, whatever it is, you have the flexibility to do that. So um, on this deal, I'm looking at it, light rehab, professional management, operational efficiencies, 10 cash on cash, 16 hour looking really good in, in uh, po Pocatello, Idaho. Probably and an opportunity to upgrade the signage. Yes. <laughs> that's on the list it is on the <laughs> list. so we want to make sure that everything else was taken care of first and then we were planning on doing a, a full uh rebrand uh that that was on the plan it's not something that uh you know we're in a hurry for because we wanted to make sure that it was all polished up and everything first mm -hmm. I, see, I see a question about uh are we scared of flat roofs uh we're not right because we're prepared for them we have lots of them around we know we know what to do to take care of them we did end up replacing the roof, which uh, came at a significant cost to us that we weren't quite expecting without we we're going to be able to just do some repairs. Uh, so we did get a little bit of a surprise there. But now we have a warranty that's transferable to the next owner and uh, definitely, definitely a good deal. Excellent. Love that. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned something that's really important, you know, is, is the, the uh, refinance opportunity. And that's what I have to talk about on what's next with this deal. You know, uh, six months ago, I would have told anybody that by the end of this year, I expected rates to come down. And our our goal this entire time was to do a refinance in March of uh, 2024, so a year from now. And that's still the, the game plan, right? Sometime in early 2024, if rates come back down into that 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 five percent range, we're going to refinance this deal and pull pull out a ton of equity for our partners. Because I told you that we bought this at se with 700 rents and our target was 900. We have units at this property that are renting for over a thousand a unit a year later. Somebody asked when we when we closed on this deal. It was it was a year ago in March when we actually closed. Mm -hmm. And so in one year, we've taken several units from the 700 range into over a thousand. And so our NOI is going to be significantly higher. We've done several other uh, value add opportunities. Uh, we're working on the next thing we're going to do is include an internet package, which is going to increase our income by fifty dollars per unit per month. And you know you do that math at a five cap, and it's it's a pretty significant bump. Yep. So, so it's thirty it's thirty times fifty, which is fifteen hundred times uh, twelve months is eighteen thousand. At a yeah. 10 cap, it's 180. At a five cap, it's $360,000 out of five cap. So that's what you're increasing the value by offering internet package. Right. Think about that, everybody. That's a 33 unit deal. You just added $300,000 of value. That's why we love multifamily. And you are in control, Senate. You're making the decisions, not the uh, CEO of SVP Bank over there who wants to do whatever he wants to, buying bonds. He's going SVP, pushing, pushing the ESG, right? <laughs> I'm, I, I'm just saying, like, you're you're in control of your own destiny. You learn the thing, and it's rinse and repeat. The next deal you find, that's the value add there. So you, once you've learned these skills, and I, I say this, you invested in your education. All of a sudden, that investment seems like peanuts compared to what you just gained on one deal, $360,000 in value versus what you've paid for mentorship. The internet play covers it, you know, itself. But the other it's thing, it. Senate, I wouldn't be surprised if you see agency in the fours next year. Uh, yeah. and, th and that's an opportunity as well on the refi, which I'd be excited about. Absolutely. And you get three years of interest only on that. You get a 30-year amortization on that. You're going to be cash flowing really, really nicely on this asset. Cruising. So a couple of things about what you guys just said. So we only put a million dollars down to buy this property, right? And that internet play alone is going to cover a third of that down payment in value. Mm -hmm. And if we're going, if we're going to be able to go back out and, and refinance this at even like a 70% loan to value, we're going to be able to return a significant chunk of that uh, investor capital back mm -hmm. to our partners. 
Mm -hmm. uh, our, our goal is to, is to get to hundred percent of the capital return. And then it's like infinite returns for everybody. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll, we'll be, we'll be That's happy. Nirvana investing right there. That's right. And then if that works, we're going to go for the long term, the 10 year hold, right? That that's the plan. Uh, and then and Anna wants to become your partner. <laughs> Anna, Anna, my, uh, I'm going to have a slide with my, uh, email. And everything. Uh, be sure that's and coming. It. That'll be coming. <laughs> the other part that I really like, I got to give a shout out to my, to my partner, Chris Carney, all of this stuff that we're doing and we're talking about the internet package and all that kind of stuff. He's doing it all right. And, and I get to be the pretty face that talks about it, right? So that's another thing that I love about multifamily is this is a team sport, 100%. and we get to we get to leverage our strengths. It's just like just like Jake and Gino here, like like Gino Gino does what he he specializes in, and Jake does what he specializes in, and now we can go in. Hey man, I do the cable contracts, right? I, I'm not afraid to admit it. The so. problem is Jake's got the pretty face though, so I can't I can't claim that. That's how that's face, how so. I get the cable contracts sweetened <laughs> up. All right. Okay, I got you, baby. I feel you. I feel you. Yeah, yeah. I I just absolutely I I love this part of it, right? That I get to work with my friends all the time, and and I get to provide value for the tenants, give them a great place to live. I get to provide a great, a beautiful asset for our community. And then I get to provide amazing returns for our investors. It's it's phenomenal. Love People that. just like Anna, right? So um, I think two slides left, if I remember right. So I do recommend you guys, if if you're at all interested in multifamily, you need a mentor. There is no way I could have done any of the things that I've done without uh, Jake and Gino. So take your take your phone out and uh, scan this QR code. Uh, it'll take you take you to that.